Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, you know, well, it doesn't really matter. They're all the Word of God. They're not really that different. So let's look at this. Let's look at this, uh, this claim that they're not all that different. It doesn't really matter which version you use. Look at James 1.17. James 1.17. James 1.17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now look at Malachi 3.6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Okay, so we've just seen in these two texts here that God has no variableness. And God doesn't change. Alright? With that thought in mind, look at Daniel 3, verse 25. Daniel 3, verse 25. Daniel 3, 25. says, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Now that's out of the King James Version. What happens if we take a look at the New International Version? He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. How about the English Standard Version? He answered and said, I see four men unbound walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Do you guys see the difference there? The King James Version says that the fourth man in the furnace is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But the modern corrupted versions take that and they change it to where it's no longer Jesus Christ. It's just a son of any pagan God out there. Does that sound like something that an unvariable and an unchanging God would do? All right, let's, let's look at another one. 2 Peter 2.9. 2 Peter 2.9. Looking at 2 Peter 2.9 in the King James Version, it says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But now what happens if we look at the American Standard Version? The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. You see a difference there? What about the contemporary English version? To punish evil people while they wait for the day of judgment. So the King James Version teaches that hell is not burning now, that the wicked are being reserved until the day of judgment when God's going to pour out the judgment on them, and then they'll be destroyed in the judgment. But the modern versions teach the papal doctrine of an ever-burning hell. It portrays God as this mean, vengeful, he's going to burn them forever. That's the same doctrine that they used to sell their indulgences in the Dark Ages. Okay, let's look at another one. 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. In the King James Bible, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved of the God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now what happens if we take a look at the New Living Translation? Work hard. So you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly explains the word of truth. You see the difference there? How about the New American Bible? Be eager to present yourself as acceptable to God, a workman who causes no disgrace, imparting the word of truth without deviation. Do you, do you see? Do you see? problem with this? 
The King James Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. What's that reference you back to? Isaiah 28. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're to study to show thyself approved unto God. Study requires Bible study and prayer. But the New Living Translation says work hard. Now suddenly it's not study, it's a works-oriented religion. Of course they're all good work. <laughs> uh, and I just, I can't get over the, the New American Bible there. Be eager. Would somebody please show me one of the wicked people in the world that are not eager to present themselves as acceptable to God? Anybody out there that wants to live in their sin would be eager to show themselves acceptable to God. So that, that verse just totally guts what the Bible is actually saying. And incidentally, the New American Bible, according to the Biblical Research Institute, is more correct than the King James. The New American Bible is the very Bible that the Biblical Research Institute is using to fight this message. All right, let's look at one more. Exodus 20, verse 10. Exodus 20, verse 10, part of the fourth commandment. In the King James Bible it says, But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The English substandard version, <coughs> But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. The American Standard Version, The seventh day is a Sabbath unto Jehovah thy God. So they change one little article. Just one. And it changes the whole meaning. Because the King James is saying the seventh day is the seal of the Creator. It's the sign between God and His people. But the other versions are saying, oh, it's not the seal. It's just one of the ceremonial Sabbaths that was done away with at the cross. So see what happens if they just change one little article? Now, I only used some of the modern versions for this illustration. They're, they're all the same. They, they all have, you, you just start going through and comparing verse with verse, they're all like this. But the reason I picked the versions that I used in this is because I personally know that every single one of these versions are ones that are being pushed and promoted in our Seventh-day Adventist churches today. The, on the last slide, the New Living Testament, I personally know of a church where the pastor said he wanted everybody to be on board and everybody to understand, and so he told his whole congregation to go out and buy a New Living Testament so everybody could read from the same Bible. The English substandard version, some of you probably know where that's being promoted today. All right, let's look at another, another deceptive argument that's used against the Word of God. How many have ever heard somebody say, oh, but, you know, that was written a long time ago. King James Bible, it's, it's old and archaic, and we don't understand those words anymore. Anybody heard that? Well, this, that argument would actually be kind of laughable. It wasn't so sad that people actually believe that. But if the, if the King James Bible is old and archaic, then we need to ban Shakespeare from all the schools. We should ban it anyway, but, you know. We should ban it from the, all the schools because Shakespeare uses the same old archaic language as the King James Bible. And we should also take Webster's Dictionary and we should throw it out. Because Noah Webster got the majority of his definitions from the King James Bible. 
Let me illustrate this. The King James Version, Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, says, Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Now this is what people say is old and archaic. You know, it uses thou and thee and art. This is old and archaic language. But yet we'll send our kids to school and make them memorize Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. You see the same language? Now I'm not promoting Shakespeare. This is I'm just showing that the same people that argue against the King James Bible have no problem promoting Shakespeare. But it's the same language. So obviously there's something faulty in that argument. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not promoting Shakespeare. That, that, that's like a bad idea. Okay, what's Noah Webster say? For his definition of thou. This is his 1828 dictionary. The second personal pronoun in the singular number, the pronoun which is used in addressing persons in a solemn style. And then look what he uses for an illustration. Matthew 11 and Psalm 23. So Noah Webster is using Bible text from the King James Bible to illustrate what his definition means. And I think it's really fascinating that it says it's used in addressing persons in a solemn style. Yes. Yes. So when it has, well, we'll get to that. I'll, I'll show you here in a second. How many of you have heard of the Flesh Kincaid Readability Studies? Uh, these are tests that they, that they put books through to figure out what level they read on. This is internationally recognized. It's an industry standard. They use this in the public schools. Everybody uses flesh K readability scale formulas. Now, if you take the King James Bible and you run the text of the King James Bible through the flesh K test, and you take the results, and then you run these modern versions through the same test, and you get those results, and then you compare the results, According to the Flesh King Cave Readability Studies there, the King James Bible reads at the fifth grade level. The New King James reads at the sixth grade level. The English version reads at the seventh grade level. The NIV reads at the eighth grade level, which is incidentally the same level that People Magazine reads at. And the English Standard Version reads at the ninth grade level, which is USA Today. But, you know, the King James Bible, that's just old and archaic.